All right, so we got about halfway through chapter two. Let's go ahead and finish up. And as you probably now are well aware, this is a UK-centric textbook. So uh, we, we just finished up looking at global energy consumption. We, we looked at the 500 exajoules per year. We looked at the 16 terawatts. We looked at how these different energies are sourced. Uh, we also defined primary energy. So now let's look at primary energy in the UK. So what, what, what they're looking at is seven, uh, seven exajoules per year. That's, that's the production. And the UK is in the world's wealthiest nations. I think it's you know, G7 or G8, whatever. Um, and you can see that their consumption is greater. And, and you'll also notice that the, the pie on the right is bigger than the pie on the left. So if you see coal, for example, on the right with a bigger slice, that means they are a net importer of coal. Um, is there anything? It looks, it looks like um, the UK is actually a, a, an exporter of uh, what again? Oil. Yeah, it looks like, a, um, surpri surprisingly enough, a, a net exporter of oil. Well, they're, at least they're, yeah, they're, well, if they're, if they're producing that much and only consuming that much, they're actually exporting a little bit of oil. Um, importing some natural gas actually able to export a little bit of nuclear, and then other sources are, are about flat. And you'll also note that the authors have done us the favor of breaking, of converting that exajoules into gigawatts. And again, if you just um, multiply 280 gigawatts by the number of seconds in a year, you should get 8.8 .8 exajoules, right back to that power, energy, and time equation. Okay. Now here are the, here are the trends, and you know, we, we frequently hear about energy security, and you know, in, in my mind, in my interp interpretation, energy security means being able to produce more than you consume. Same thing with food security. And, you know, we're very fortunate on this continent to have, to have both. Uh, for a while, we were uh, net energy importers, but we've, we've since uh, changed that. We're now net energy exporters. But here's what the UK looks like. And you can see that they were net exporters for, gosh, a couple decades, but now they're actually importing, uh, importing more than they were previously. And... You know, you can kind of look at this as a, a trade deficit. You know, a trade deficit of, of two exajoules might say, oh, we're a little more, more vulnerable or if we're able to, you know, export, uh, uh, have a net export, we're, we should be doing better because we're getting uh, money as a result of exporting energy. All right, and here are those numbers broken down by source. So the top is production. And yeah, you can see that oil production overall has gone down, but um, still kind of hovering right, right there above three. So uh, re remarkably, you know, up, in, up until 2010 at least, the UK was actually able to be a, a, a net exporter of oil. And there's, there's nuclear there. As I said before, renewables are, are pretty flat. Not unexpected, kind of hard to um, export wind or um, export sun, or <laughs> I mean, you could, you could think of exporting biomass. And in fact, I think that's something we're gonna see more of in Montana pretty soon is the um, exporting of biomass for energy. Um, I've, I've been proposing well, in fact, I just, I just handed a, a document to um, Governor Bullock and a document to um, Ambassador Bacchus for a proposal to actually go and harvest a lot of this hazardous biofuels that we've been breathing here for the last couple months, go and harvest it, and then um, sell that as a net export of, of biofuels um, in, instead of coal. Because I, I, I see it as a one-two punch. You know, how do you clean up the air, increase tourism, 
and have an economic boom to, to Montana. So we'll see if we can get our act together and do it. But that's you know an example of a renewable uh, primary energy source that you could you could uh, argue for the export of biomass. What are ways that's being used other than just burning? Uh, so there, there's an individual here in Montana by the name of Patrick Brown I've been collaborating with. He's one of the principals of international biomass, and um, he has a uh, product taking one pound of, uh, well, see the, the garbage bag sitting right over there? I mean, it, it will have a fate, fate someday. You know, it's either going to be buried somewhere, it's going to be built or turned into some other durable good, or um, it's going to be burned, and you know, in my opinion, uh, the best thing to do with that thing is is take it, combine it with the biomass, use it as a binder as an alternative to some of these pellets that we see, and then just turn it into energy. I mean, it wouldn't become oil anyway, um, and so in my opinion, rather than watch that plastic just fill up in the landfill, I'd rather I'd rather see it as a waste energy product. So that's one example, and it's just it's just starting to come online right now. There's a EPA approved um, power plant in Wisconsin where those are being used. Um, so it's, you know, combining a waste product with, uh, well, wood waste. <laughs> yeah. But a lot of it too gets turned into pellets and, and, and used for energy, used for heat. Okay, so here are the total uh, contributions. This is just, this is from the renewables now. And so we're down, down now below an exajoule. We're into the, the petajoule <coughs> category. 10 to the 15th, remember that's, that's PETA. Uh, big fraction is biomass. You can see that some of that is, is landfill gas. So as long as you are putting organic matter in the landfill, there are microorganisms that will break it down and, and turn it into methane. So, there, so that's, that's a fraction of it, the landfill gas. Uh, sewage gas is, is another one. I, um, I'm working with um, uh, another gentleman here in town has been trying to develop a means of turning biogas into methane. Uh, if you've heard about Hull's Dairy, they're a farm down the Bitterroot that takes uh, the, the biogas from manure breakdown and turns that into electricity to run their farms. So they're actually able to be you know, fairly sustainable energy, energy security in-house. So there's um, essentially sewage gas, you know, any, any type of um, effluent from, from uh, animal waste. Uh, there, there's some wood, municipal waste, that's going to be like your incinerators, for example, uh, pyrolysis units. The same gentleman I mentioned from International Biomass is working with a UK company that would love to license their pyrolysis units right here in Missoula, Montana to take all of the nasty bandages and gowns and all the crap that comes out of St. Pat's and turn that into energy but not in an incineration way, but there's your kind of municipal waste. Um, liquid biofuels is another one, and then just other biomass. Wind and wave, I mentioned before, those are starting to come online, separate from hydro, per your question previously. Um, a little bit of geothermal and some solar heat, but man, those things are just gonna take off. I, I, I can see it in a big way, geothermal and solar heat across the board. All right, um, now we look at Denmark, slightly different profile. You can see that they are actually um, producing more than they consume. They don't produce coal at all? Nah, they, yeah, they do, they do import it, and I'm not sure if that's because they don't have any or they just haven't developed it or they put a ban on it, I just, I don't know. If this were Finland, I think we'd see a much larger slice on the wind power. Uh, how exactly they are consuming more wind power than they, they produce, I am not sure. It could just be because they're on, they're on some grid and they've got a power purchase agreement with a, with a neighboring country. Um, we do, uh, Montana does that all the time. With, with our wind, we've got a, a, we have, we have a surplus of all energies uh, really across the board in Montana. So um, there are power purchase agreements in place to buy and, buy and sell all kinds of renewables on a, on a uh, 
very fast basis, almost as fast as you see on, on the stock market. So, but that, that little snapshot right there, uh, 3% means that some fraction of the wind they use is, is being imported through a, through a power grid. All right. So here's Denmark, annual primary energy pr production and consumption. You can see that they became net exporters not too long ago. That, as you would imagine, would make them a wealthier state if they're actually selling it. Um, and there it is on the bottom by source. Um, other renewables and waste just continue to climb. Coal dropped, gas dropped, oil fairly flat. So I think as we'll see, eventually these, these lines will certainly cross, no, no question there. And here's a, another snapshot of, of Denmark. Not that unlike, um, not that unlike the UK. A lot more wind. Um, not so much wave. Uh, there's there's straw being being burned. Uh, they're they're make, making use of it. I'm surprised that I'm surprised that that's being turned into um, energy. In my opinion, it seems like it'd be much better to just keep that as a as an agricultural product and put it you know put that carbon back into the soil as a as a nutrient. But there you have it. Okay, here's the here's the the U.S. net importer by a long shot. I, this and again, these figures are uh, a few years old, I, and I think they they've changed substantially since this textbook was published. But nevertheless, it's a it's a pretty good. Shot and of the you know snapshot at least of where we were a few years ago, um, producing 73 exajoules, importing 96 exajoules. When you see that 96 right away, that's about 20 percent of, of global energy consumption. Net importer making us in in some ways uh, more susceptible. I, I think. This, you can see this trend changing. It could be we've actually crossed that threshold by now to be a net export. It just keeps getting worse. What's that? Our, our production and consumption just keeps getting further. Well, further. It, it, it was for a while, but there's, there's really no excuse for not turning that thing around. I mean, we, we, we did the numbers on what it would take to um, be self-sufficient with renewables, and you know, in, in my opinion, there's, there's really no, no excuse for it anymore. And I mean, sure, it could it could be that we continue to export coal to China and things like that, but um, yeah, I, I I think it's high high time that we became much more self sufficient as a as a country. Um, the 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 total consumption really has, has flattened to a large extent. We talked a little bit about um, energy technologies becoming more efficient. All right, here's the U.S.'s profile of the, over the past several years. Oil consumption has dropped, coal consumption has dropped, natural gas is, is sort of flattened, uh, and there's your nuclear hanging in there but somewhat flat, and the renewables just, even though they make up a modest amount, continue to climb, even at that very bottom part, if you look down here, is a nice little um, uptick in renewable energy production. Okay, and then here's renewables, and the, you don't you don't see too much of this ethanol being used. That's you know mostly because of subsidies to the agriculture, to the um, mainly to the corn uh, corn farmers. Fair amount of geothermal energy. Some of that geothermal could be uh, become electric if it's hot enough. Some of it's just uh, local thermal energy as well. So electricity and heat, two percent and rising. For uh, wind, four point three and rising as well. Um, I'm surprised to see that much on the on the waste front, but there it is. Uh, there's I was just in uh, in Billings and met with uh, one of the 
uh, commissioners in Florida and was discussing with her the expansion of a, of a, a waste energy facility in Palm Springs, Florida. So they're, they're coming online, happening all the time. All right, I don't think we need to beleaguer the other countries too much. Um, I do want to, I just do, do want to highlight uh, China really quickly though and look at that coal. <laughs> look at that coal profile, man. It's uh, pretty more than they have it. Well, yeah, 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 but they, they're, they're pretty interested in getting, getting their hands on what we, we have too. They're going, going. Well, the fact that they're producing that much doesn't mean that they're going to be able to continue producing that much. It, it's true, yeah, and, and later in the book we'll get into these reserved production ratios too and we'll sort of see what, what those are like. Yeah. Yeah, so China's still exporting a lot, but uh, starting to in, import quite a bit too. All right. Oh, and then, oh, sorry, let me just hit that one last little slide on China. Um, yeah, you, you see curves like this, you're like, man, where where is the ceiling on that sucker? It's just <laughs> pretty pretty astonishing. And as we, we get into it later, there's a there's a paper on um, nuclear reactors in China we'll look into as, as well, and you can see that's um, um, mentioned right there with, in, in terms of the other sources, 1995 nuclear power, and that, that's expected to rise too. Okay, so that's chapter one. Um, sorry, that's chapter two. Unit one. <laughs> Unit one. Uh, exam one is ready for you. 20, 30 questions on there. It's not going to be that difficult. I think I highlighted a lot of things that'll, that'll be on the exam. So take your time. You got three hours to do it. Um, I'd like to have you finished with that by uh, Tuesday before coming to class. I think Tim already mentioned, if you've got problems, shoot him an email, shoot me an email, we'll, we'll get you through the first one. Questions at all? Where are you going? First straight um, yeah. um, Do you have any example papers previously just Oh, for summaries? Summaries. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, Tuesday, let's look at some example summary papers. Uh, I might have a chance to upload one before now and then, but uh, yeah, we'll, I'll kind of show you some do's and don'ts on the summary so you nail that one too. Good question, thanks. All right, hey, good luck on the exam and have a great weekend. We'll see you Tuesday.